Okay, this is a Lockwood uh, digital code lock. Um, I did already film a video on this, but I've been playing with it more, and I think yeah, the first video is really no good. Uh, so I'm gonna do some give some thoughts, and then we'll cut to the gutting of it the first time because I do not want to do it that again. Uh, so to decode one of these, you need to turn the knob in a direction. Doesn't really matter which one. Um, to make sure it's just reset first. And then, it has sort of two stages because of the way the code um, wafers are. They have false gates, but they only have a false gate on this side. On this side of the numbers, they do not have a false gate. Um, and of course, we currently have this set up where there are two numbers on the left and two on the right. Theoretically, they could be installed with all the numbers on the right or all the numbers on the left. It just depends. Um, but basically, stick some tension on. It doesn't need to be a ton. And you want to push. So one is quite springy, two is quite springy, three is pretty rock solid, four is springy, five is rock solid, X and Y are springy. They've got quite a lot of compression to the point where you could easily push in five, you're like, no. Nah. Four would go in, two would go in, one would go in, three, no, nah. I have to push three, and five you'd have to push. And then we can see we've fallen into like a false set. Um, so now we can just go through this and check again. So three we obviously pushed, four, they're all just as spring as they were before. So that's the left side set. Very easy. If you get more numbers on this side, um, you're in luck. Next, you want to go the other side. Now, what I find is they kind of, none of them feel very springy when you come to this side. Um, Two, three, four, five, six, and I haven't been able to find a reliable way to feel which one really is a number. They kind of all feel the same. Uh, but there's only a few numbers, so if you just let off tension and go press say, six, and then measure. No, nope. oh, only six and seven. No, that wasn't it. So we'll reset, we go three, five, six, eight. No. Nope. Reset, three, five, six, nine. Nope. Three, five, six, zero. Nope. Three, five, six, Z. Nope. Three, five, seven, eight. Now we've already done seven, six. The order doesn't matter. It's not that. Three, five, um, seven, nine. No. Three, five, seven, zero. No. Three, five, seven, Z. No. Three, five, eight, nine. Open. Right? Pretty easy. When you've only got two numbers on this side left, you just brute force them pretty fast. Um, yeah, the mass, the total number of possible combinations, once you've eliminated this many numbers, makes it way, 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 way easier. Um, the order you put them in will never, ever matter. It's purely, is it in or isn't it in? Um, if we look on the back, I mean, you're going to see this gutted as well, um, but I can't remember what I said on that video. Um, so when it's a number is pushed in, you can see that it sits up this way, and the other ones are down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Y, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, Z. Clear. Right, so that's basically how it works. When you pull this down, there's a big plate that tries to come down uh, pull down, and um, if the code gates are in the way, it'll get stuck. Um, hopefully my gutting video is not terrible, and we'll cut to that, and that's basically how it works. Um, to the best of what I can work on on these things, the left side is really easy, just you can find it super easily with tension, uh, like it's, they stand right out. If you're lucky to get enough more of them on this side, your time will be even easier. If you put on tension and all of them are really springy, then you're probably going to be able to find one on this side. I haven't actually played with it to find out what happens if you stick them all on this side. But either or, um, even if, if they're all on this side, one, two, three, four, five, like you've only got six choices, and you've only got to not press two of them, so that's not that many combinations either if they're actually really all here. So you'll work that out either. You just brute force it if you can't find anything. Um, yeah, there you go. That is these. Pull it apart, I'll show you how it works. So, if you look at the back, if you look closely, 
You can see some of them are blue and some of them are red. So the red ones are the code ones, but you can't really see that super well. So let's get up parts tray, pull to cut. So to get to decoding, you take, I'm not sure if we're going to pull this entirely apart, but kind of plan to pull back together again, to be honest. This is how you get to the recoding section anyway. Pull these four straight screws out. There. Right, so that gives you this plate, which is got springs on it. Let's keep that up out of the way. Um, so now if we just push all the buttons, that will push these up like so. And we can pull them out. Tweezers. So there's one. Two. So, um, before we go any further, and the last one, the C, you can't pull that out. Not on that anyway. So, just quickly, you can see uh, here, these are the ones that you don't touch. So, they've got a gate at the top position that's in the rest. Um, and if you push it further, it'll, there's a little false gate section on it. The code ones are the opposite. At the top, there's a little false gate section and then a big gate. So, yeah. Basically, how that works. Um, now, all the numbers sit on one side, so I'm going to gently take this out. Alright. Like that. So the numbers will now just fall, or the, the buttons will fall out. That connects the knob, it's got a nice gear there and a handle. Leave that to the side. Nothing really to do on that. So this piece now, uh, we'll have to take all of these springs off, which is annoying because it means we have to put them all back on again. But anyway, we might be able to get away with not doing it. Not sure, Oops, let's put it right way around so I don't get confused. Right. Trying to gently lift off all these springs without having to redo them all. There we go. Alright, so there's this nice plate here, which just kind of is the stand for everything. Put that over there. Uh, so the important piece is, um, well, this one, and here's part of the reset mechanism um, for this piece here, and then we have, this is the main and most important piece, a couple of springs for that, um, this, so what happens is it sits in there, and you've got the numbers in the position, and then you've got these code pieces which sit in like this. So they'll sit like that. Uh, and then when you go to put on the handle, it slides it down like this. So the ones that are at rest just sit like that. But if you lift them up too high and it pushes into the thing, it'll get stuck. Won't be able to go. So that's basically how it works. It just slides back and forth. And if they're at the right height, it can go past them. And if they're not at the right height, then they can't go past them. Otherwise, you know, let's get some different angles of that. So you can see that code pieces just sit in there. Um, oops, they would sit like that. Oops, pulling the middle bar out too. I didn't know that came out. Easily, maybe I'll give that a clean while we're at it. Mm. Actually, not too bad. Part of the like the reset assembly. Knocking springs off though. Um, anyway, so there's some little leaf springs there. To... Oop, springs falling out everywhere. I said it's fiddly. Um, anyway, they sit in there, um, and then yeah, like uh, let's. Everything 
things falling out of it. Anyway, um, that sits like that. The thing goes down. <sighs> Rambling. Um, that's how it works. They're pretty nifty. Now I'm going to try and put it back together again. <laughs>